Hey everyone, welcome to another five minute game. Oh, we have a French defense. I'm playing an IM named Zet. Let's see if I can find out who this is. Age 85, retired 35 years ago. So, obviously, this guy's just being silly in his finger notes. Moves fast for an 85 year old, gotta be honest. Alright, I'm gonna play this boring line. I mean, honestly, I should switch to um, Queen C1 here. But for now, I'll just keep playing this move, which I know is sort sort of faulty. Uh, H4, H6 is the move here. This is all theory, I'm just blitzing the moves out. Mm, I don't think people do this in general. I think this is considered like pretty nice for me. I mean, can I win a pawn at least? I mean, I assume I should take on E4. Let me just. See if I have something better. With knight g6, rook e8, then I take. There's no reason that's useful, right? No, I'll just take it now. Oh, let's think. Queen takes and rook d1 looks interesting, but not super convincing. Well, actually, I like it. I mean, rook e1's also good, but. I mean, the thing I'm thinking of bishop d7, rook a to c1, and he has some coordination problems, and his e6 pawn is a little shaky. So I'm liking my position. I mean, again, knight takes e5 is not the move. He's supposed to play. I think knight takes. Wait, I forget. Maybe knight takes d4. Yeah, knight takes d4 is the right move, right? I don't know. I'm confused. Uh, rook d6 was also playable. Maybe stronger, actually. Because I would have been threatening some good stuff. Uh, alrighty then. So I'm just up a pawn with a very strong position. I assume he'll take my rook. Then I'll recapture. When he goes rook e8, I have the move. Um, I'll probably have a rook d6. <sighs> yeah, what the hell. Uh, if, if king f7, knight d8. I, I could have went rook d8 too, but I'm not... That's probably good. I just worried about my e pawn a little bit. It's like stranded out there. Although it's probably just technically winning position. Maybe I'll do it next move. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, probably rook d8 was. Oh no no, you could trap my knight maybe, by taking and going bishop d5. So, good instincts, Greg, not to do it. And now we have ideas like. Actually, I don't know what my idea is. I don't really have one. I'm just going to move my king in, I guess. Alright. Well, now I can go rook d8. I think it should be like pretty strong. I'm, I'm just going to do it. Because he can't trap my knight anymore. Um, and, and I think if he can't trap my knight, I'm just going to stick a knight on d4. It creates a barrier from which his king can't pass. So like, let's imagine I put a knight on d4, a pawn on b4. His king is kind of, has almost no entryway into my position. And therefore, he should be in big trouble. I'm going to slowly walk my king up to, to e3, and his pawn on e4 will fall eventually. I, I just like this knight on d4, pawn on b4, pawn on e5 barrier. I mean, look at where his king, his king can't come in. The only way I can see is h5 to g4. <laughs> but I mean, okay, that's like ridiculous. So I, I think he's in some trouble here. I'm just going to create that setup if I can. Um, I'll just take it. He has to take with the bishop. And then I win the d-pawn if I want. But what's funny is I might just ignore it because it's, it's like my knight goes to a weird square. Let's see. Knight d8, king e7, knight b7. King e6 is the only move there. Let's just go to the barrier that we talked about earlier. I, I, I don't know. He should go maybe a5. So he can at least try to bring his king in I, to c5. But it takes forever to get there even. He's got a real big problem in this position. This knight on d4. Like, again, I could have taken on b7. I just already saw this, this idea of the barrier. And I felt like 
it's so good that why should I even complicate things at all? Um, I guess I'll take... Mm, this seems useful. Just wanted to stop a5. So now he, ha he still has this problem. Um, g4 is not great because then he can attack that pawn. So his only plan of activity with the king is to bring it... It brings it to g4 though and I'm probably just going to queen the e-pawn in some variation. So... This is an important game because you're seeing like schematic thinking. Where I'm just kind of creating a setup that he can't he can't um penetrate. Like this move is not gonna help in any way. <clears throat> uh, I mean if if he goes b6 and a5, I just go a3. I can I continue the the barrier. All of my pieces are also in dark squares, as you notice, so I don't have to <laughs> I don't have to worry about anything. I mean, maybe his best move is even e3, just to like, I don't know, just to make my, my pawns not that great, but this is, it's not what he did. Hmm, okay, I'll do this. Um, alright, so he's trying to create a position where he thinks I, I can't move forward. But I can move my knight and then go to d4 with the king, so let's just go here. Pretty strong position. Uh, g4. Let's just do it. Keep his king out of f5, then go knight g3 to e4. He's going to move his king. Oh, he didn't. Um, f4 is interesting. But it's also a little sketchy. One second. Hmm. I mean, I, I messed up a little bit, of course. Because he has bishop f3 next move. One momento. Spending all my time because like almost winning. Oh wait, oh, I just do this. I don't know. I figure these pawns are strong somehow. <clears throat> Looks useful. I'm gonna hope this is good. It's a little risky to have pushed that pawn. You can go king g6. Obviously my technique was far from perfect. Not the most shocking thing that's ever happened in my life. I'm going to move my king around for a bit. I still have a barrier. <laughs> so my plan is just to screw around for just a few moves. Uh, maybe knight b3 to c5. I mean, you can't defend this in blitz. I mean, I'm probably winning anyway. But my moves were a little... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to triangulate real quick. Oh. Yeah, I wanted... Oh, he's moving the king, though. Um, I wanted to do... Let's do that. Oh, come back. Hmm. That's not a good move. Uh, all right, let's start with this move. I'm trying to, I, you know, honestly, I don't even have to play good moves anymore. I'm just going to win on time. But what can you do? It's nice to try to make some halfway decent chess moves. It feels good in my soul, you know. All right, so obviously I played some bad moves here. Oh, I can just do this, though. I win the G-pawn. And still... Very good chances to win the game. Alright, flag. I mean, whatever. You know, my technique was off. I was totally... 
totally technically winning, and instead I had to end up winning due to like the clock, pretty much. It's a bit sad, but what can you do? That's what happens when you suck at chess. <laughs> you just have to, uh, you know. I mean, I mean, whatever. He, he defended pretty well. What can I say, man? But okay, obviously I was completely winning. I just g uh, four is maybe like unnecessary. Like I, I told you, I should never put a pawn in the same stupid color as his bishop. Like. I mean, I figured this is winning. <laughs> it's not really that hard, even. I'm assuming. Oh, I can go here, actually. I can probably go a4 and b5 also. Create some issues. a4 and a5. The key is to have some patience. You know, as soon as I make a move like g5, g4, create some weakness. I mean, let's see how winning I am. It likes my move the best. Oh, you know, also I didn't like um, pushing the pawn. I should leave my pawns together for probably as long as I can. I have to be careful at like king d5 because um, then this pawn... Although I can come back then. It's not really going to be queen. Oh, whatever, I was winning and I, I kind of blew it. But And when I say blew it... I. I think the final position, I'm probably still winning, because I can just go after his queenside pawn, so. It was just a little more complicated than I wanted it to be. But anyway, other than that, before that, I played well, I think. So anyway, thanks guys for watching. I will see you next time with another 5-minute game. Peace out. Bye-bye.